Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And today we are going to be talking about fitness, real fitness, overall fitness, true healthy fitness. <laughs> Most people think of fitness as just exercise or just physical fitness. Fitness can refer to your mental health, to your emotional health, your spiritual health. Um, your energetic health. These are all what the whole body goes through to incorporate fitness. So what I would like to address is really getting to that level and where does it all start? Um, so the question is, where does real fitness begin? And most people think real fitness begins as far as physical fitness goes as working out or exercising or doing something with our physical body to exercise it. And that's important for sure. But just getting to the gym or just getting into a exercise routine can be very difficult for a lot of people. Look, we a lot of us go to a nine to five job and, and work for eight, 10, 12 hours sometimes, come home exhausted, and then you know have to go to the gym so we see it as a chore. We see it as um, something we have to do or should do. And, you know, that's where the mental part of this can come in, as well as the emotional part. We can be emotionally drained. We can be at workplace and boss yells at us or we do something at work that doesn't work out and people, our workmates don't like it or you actually say something really good in a work meeting and people get jealous of you and start trying to you know trying to bash you or undercut you or you know there's lots of things that can go on in our lives our personal relationships as well as our business ones that can get us out of a mental and emotional mindset and heart set that makes it difficult to exercise, difficult to get the physical aspect of taking care of <clears throat> the human body. And that's where we really need to tie it all in together. And I'm going to talk about some of the techniques that I use um, to try to get myself prepared to do exercise. So most people, when you think about motivation, what's your motivation to go into the gym? So I tie my physical exercise to a cause much bigger than myself. Um, I do this to try to represent not only for my company, which is important for sure, but for everyone to hopefully inspire other people to live a clean lifestyle, to live it without drugs, to live it healthy, to live it in a natural way. Uh, because I, I know the benefits of this, and that's something that I wish to pass along to others. It's just like if you have kids, right? If you have kids, what do you want to do? You want to give them the best. You want to get them going on a path that's going to give them the best experience. So that's what I'm trying to offer. And of course, everybody's choice is up to themselves. But how do you get there from there? So motivation, tying your motivation to the workout, to something bigger than just the topical stuff like i want to look better or i want to you know look good in a swimsuit okay that's very surface and that's very easy for your mind to say well if i miss a day it doesn't matter you know whereas if you're tying it to your health if you're tying it to being here for your family for your loved ones for to inspire others that's a bigger goal outside of yourself that you can't as easily dismiss because you're holding yourself responsible by tying it to a greater cause or more things that are important to you, people you care about, your your wife, your husband, your your daughters, your your sons, your your parents, the people that you want to be around, you want to be present and healthy for. So tie that motivation to doing the workouts to something bigger than yourself. And it may make it easier for you to say, you know, when you start getting all those mental things like, well, I could just miss this one day or I'll put it off because I'm too busy or I'll put it off because I'm just stressed out from work. When you have a bigger goal, a bigger mindset, um, that can motivate you to say, you know what, I'm going to feel better after this workout. Let's go ahead and muscle through it. I may not feel totally right right now because stressed out from work, but I'm going to feel better after this. So another technique that I use is 
talking to my future self, or actually better, listening to my future self. Now, have you ever looked back on your life and said, God, I wish I had, or man, I should have? Well, that is your now self talking to your past self. Now, let's reverse that and say you are your future self. What would your future self say to you right today? Don't miss this workout. It's important. Don't skip on your nutrition. It's important. What if your future self has a disease state? Would you be listening to them? Listen to your future self just as you would want to tell your past self, hey, make a better choice. All right. Listen to your future self who knows better because they are experiencing, your future self is experiencing what you choose now. And if you think of it in that way, you'll start making choices for your future. And when you get to that future, you're gonna like that future a lot better than if you chose something else now. So that's a that's a technique that I do when I sit and I'm like in the car and I'm like, ah, oh God, I just really don't wanna work out today. I listen to my future self and my future self is looking at me very happy because he, he knows, my future Jeff knows I'm listening and, and, and I'm going to do the right thing today. Um, time management. We've got to prepare for success. Um, but a lot of that time management is our perception of time. And that's where the mental aspect of this comes in. Um, we can say, I, if you're really excited about doing something, you say, I can squeeze it in. I can get it done, right? You get excited about it and you're going to make the time to make that happen. Whereas if you really don't want to do something and you're not so excited about something, I don't have enough time. That that effort seems to expand and take, oh, that's going to take a lot of time. Never mind. That's just your mind playing tricks and shrinking or expanding your perception of time. If you want to do something really badly, you'll make the time. You'll squeeze that in there and you'll actually get it done. If you are not emotionally or mentally set on that, you will expand that in your mind to say, that's going to take too much time. I won't get it done to use as an excuse to get out of it. So listen to the mind tricks that your mind can play on you um, because it's, your mind is trying to rescue you. Your mind wants easy. Uh, so you got to have to work with your mind. You got to have to make a deal with your mind and say, all right, we're going to get this done. Then I'm going to take some rest. And your mind says, okay, well, great. Because your, your stressed mind says, I need a break. I don't want to work out. I need a break. I need to rest. I need to chill. So what you want to do is to get out of that stressed mind is to tell your mind, okay, we'll chill right after this workout. Let's get this workout done. It's going to energize us. It's going to make us feel better. Let's work out some of that aggression and that anger and that stress. And I'm going to feel better. And then I'm going to chill. I promise you, I'll chill. Go by the pool, sit and have a nice, you know, smoothie and just chillax. De-stress it out. And then your brain says, okay, I can do that. You're giving me what I need. I need to de-stress. I'll, I'll let you have what you need. Let's go get that workout done. We're going to both feel better. So this is a conversation that you need to have with your emotional self, with your mental self, and that'll keep you on point and on track. Because a lot of the times, you know, people say, well, I work out five days a week. And then I talk to them and uh, I track them over a period of time. And on average, they're working out two to three times a week. Their intention is to work out five times a week. Their actuality, because they keep in this loop of their brain and their emotional self keep talking them out that they skip and they skip and they skip and now they're down to two, two and a half workouts a week and you're not getting the same results. And you're like, I'm working out five days a week and I'm not getting results. And I'm like, no, actually you're working out two and a half times a week when we track you. So that's not the case. And it's because of these excuses that we're fighting with. And look, your, your mental self and your emotional self aren't wrong. They're trying to help you. They're trying to make it easier for you. But what they don't understand, what that conversation, that dialogue that you need to have with your mental and your emotional self is, hey, this is going to be better for me. And yes, I hear you. We are stressed. 
I am mentally stressed. I am emotionally stressed. I need some downtime. So that's when you can make a, have a conversation with yourself and really kind of almost bargain with yourself. I'll give you what you need. You give me what I need to get um, the best physical health. Now we can do the same thing with diet. I call this the loop. It's a really bad loop, but it's one we can step out of if we start with conscious efforts. The loop is um, we don't feel so good. We're stressed from work or, or um, argument with, uh, with someone or something like that. And then you get stressed and then a stressed will feel better. Our mind knows, hey, if you eat that bad food, you know, full of sugar, full of uh, salt, full of fats, the body is going to like oh, calm down. It's going to actually feel heavy. It's going to desensitize because you're already sensitive from an emotional or mental stress. So what you do is you introduce that bad food and it does, it calms you down. It's like, ah, I feel better. Whether it's a beer or a, a you know, a big sandwich or a, a, <laughs> a donut, like I pictured today, a uh, vegan donut, of course. Uh, but yeah, we reach for these comfort foods because they comfort us. That's what we call them, comfort foods. But when we do that, then our physical body starts to downregulate. Our microbiome is affected by that negative food. Then our microbiome can effectively absorb the nutrients that we need. Then we're physically depressed a little bit. And then our microbiome can't produce the serotonin. So we become a little more emotionally downgraded a little bit. And then that emotional downgrade gets us unmotivated. So we stop exercising. Well, that makes us get a little heavier. And then we look at our body and that makes us that. Uh, you see this loop and it just keeps feeding itself. So we have to step out of that loop. And that is the mental and emotional part. As soon as we reach our food or as soon as we say no to working out, we are stepping on that loop. And it's a dangerous loop because it's self-perpetuating. The more you eat bad, the worse you feel emotionally, the worse you feel physically, the less you work out. And that loop and cycle will just continue and it'll drag you down. And that's why we've got 66% of the population of the United States with diabetes or pre-diabetes, uh, overweight and obese. It's because of this. And look, every commercial that comes on, the, all the food commercials that come on, all the food, fast food stores all around us make it super easy. Hey, it's right here in front of you. I know you're stressed. I know you want to eat this crappy food. Don't do it. <laughs> That's where you got to get your mental check and your emotional check or you won't have the physical results that you want, the health benefits that come from eating right and exercise. So changing that whole diagram around when i was at a, a raw food conference once and people were asking how can we get more people interested in consuming more raw foods you know not just totally going raw foods but just at least consuming more raw foods and i said well we're looking at this backwards your the understanding is that people will want to eat raw foods and instead, they're really feeding their emotions and their psychological states. And that's what most of the eating is. It's emotional or mental eating. It's not eating to provide nutrition. Food is supposed to be nutrition for this body. We've turned food into feeding how our mental states and our emotional states are. That's not what food is for. <laughs> it's to feed and make this body work. We put the food in here and we digest it so that our body can function at optimal levels. That's what food is for. We need to stop using food to feed our emotional and psychological states. But that's where we're starting from. We get stressed by work. We get we get uh, into places. So here are a couple of clear things that you can see. Um, so if you get, if people are generally bored, one of the common things that they'll reach for are stimulants or sweets. Why? Because that energizes. It gets us out of that bored state. What is a bored state? A bored state is your neurons being understimulated. So no thought processes go on and the neurons start to shut down inside your brain. And your brain says, 
uh, that's a pretty <laughs> unattractive state. It's not comfortable. Let's get something to turn that back on. And that's caffeine, most likely. That's why caffeine is, coffee is the, uh, and, and tea are the number one consumed beverages in the world because of caffeine, because mostly we're bored. Why is it that we're bored though? We should be excited about life. We're given this amazing body and we are giving the tools to feel, to think, to explore, to be creative, to exercise, to have fun, to joke, to dance, to sing, all of these amazing gifts we have as a human being, to be creative, to be inventive, to, to have dynamic conversations with people. That should excite us, not just a stimulant, not just something that we're putting in our mouths. That's not real stimulation. So when we're getting bored, instead of reaching for the stimulant or, or the sweet or the sugar or whatever, we should be thinking, okay, what is it that gets us excited? What do we get excited about? Um, read a book, see a movie, do something that gives you input, have a conversation with someone uh, that's close to you, pick up the phone, give somebody a call, get that mental excitement going, engage. That's where our brains wake up and get alive. You'll find yourself wanting less caffeine, needing less of it, needing and reaching for less sweets when you start doing things that engage your brain. Get a puzzle, get a crossword puzzle, or anything that you feel is fun to you, is dynamic. Get out in nature. Go play something in, in, in the outdoors. Get that external stimulation. Go to the beach or the mountains or, or the parks or anything like that and get some of that in input coming in so our brain wakes up and when you have a excited brain and a happy brain that's when we start reaching for good things because if we are in a positive mental state we're going to reach for positive foods because why we want to support that positive experience so what we're doing most of the time is looking at getting ourselves into a negative experience and then reaching for negative foods that help us bring that negative experience into a different place. So what you want to do when you find yourself going to the fridge, <laughs> reaching for something, ask yourself, why am I choosing that food right now? Nine times out of 10, it's because something you're emotionally feeling or mentally thinking about that's either stressing you or troubling you or bothering you or it got you in some not good place. If you are coming from a happy place, what do I wanna do? If I'm happy and grateful, what I wanna do is feed this body exactly what it is to be fully alive, because that's how I'm feeling. That's what you do to, to someone, in this case, your own body. That's what you do, you heal it, you repair it, you do good things to the things you love, right? <laughs> But if you're not in a loving place, if you're not happy with what's going on in your life, we end up taking that out on this, this body. And that's not fair. Our body is like a dog. <laughs> it loves us unconditionally. You throw crappy food in it and it's going to try to heal and repair you anyway. It doesn't say, oh, you suck. You threw happy, uh, crappy food in you. Um, I'm going to I'm going to just shut down everything and I'm not going to play. No, your body keeps on keeping on for you. It keeps healing no matter what you do to it. It keeps cleansing no matter what garbage you put into it. It's like an unconditional love of a dog. But you don't do bad things to your dog because you love them. Let's turn that the body around to it too. And I, look, I realize this is mostly an unconscious thing that we don't even realize that we're treating our bodies so badly by not exercising, by taking on stress every day from work and not doing something to counterbalance that, by adding healthy foods to our body so it can adapt and handle the stress better, by using natural herbs like adaptogens that can help our bodies deal with the stress better. Stress is unavoidable in life. We have it, it's, it's there. What we do with that stress, how we handle it and what we choose out of that place is how we can either change it, improve it, or get stuck on that loop and go down that spiral. And that choice is up to you. And that's why I've dedicated this whole talk to be about mental and emotional awareness and consciousness. Because if you don't get those two things aligned, you're not going to be very successful at the um, physical health. 
So the fitness comes from the whole experience. It's interesting in the um, microbiome research, I'm gonna talk about this one study, that they found that just being lonely, loneliness itself, decreased the amount of biodiversity in the microbiome. Now, when we decrease the amount of bio, microbiome diversity, all these different types of uh, probiotics in there produce different chemicals on uh, metabolites that have different positive health benefits in our body. But as you start to reduce them and they go away, now you have less health benefits going on. And simply the act of being lonely reduces the number of probiotics in our gut. That's how your emotional state affects your physical state, literally. Literally, you cannot be as healthy when you are feeling lonely. If, you, if you're feeling lonely, you know, a companion animal can be a wonderful thing. Getting outside and connecting with nature can make you feel less lonely. Um, picking up the phone again or just getting in contact, even social media, FaceTime with somebody, do find the connection. When we feel connected to somebody, that is when we stop feeling that loneliness. It's when we isolate that we feel that. So this is how just what we think of as nothings, little nothings, make a huge impact on our overall health and fitness. Here's another um, uh, example of a study. And these are actual real published human studies. So this is science. We're not talking woo-woo stuff here. <laughs> We're talking real physical biochemical science. So this, this uh, study, I'll go ahead and drop it into the chat box. Yes, mindset, big time. Okay, but I, I, I really like this study because it really points out something cool. Just uh, when you see it in the chat box, if you're on now, I'll post it also in the comment section down below. Um, from mental power to muscle power, gaining strength by using the mind. So this is an interesting quote. I'm going to quote it right from, from the study itself. It says, we conclude that the mental training employed by this study enhances cortical output. That's the uh, cortical um, part of the brain. Cortical output signal, which drives the muscle to a higher activation level, increases strength. That is saying that your mindset can weaken or strengthen you in the gym. So here's a good exercise that I do on a regular basis. When I drive, I drive to the gym, go to LA Fitness. I get into the parking lot. When I pull in, I sit there for a few moments and gather my thoughts, center myself, and say, I am here to do a positive impact on my health for myself, for my wife, and for others. And with that intention, I take it into the gym and I feel so much stronger. Uh, Cindy, this uh, quote is actually from that study. So if you just uh, copy the uh, um, PubMed uh, citation that I just uh, uh, put into the chat box, uh, you'll actually see that quote directly from the study itself. That is a quote directly from the study. I'll just drop that quote in here and I can pull it right up on the screen too so uh, everybody else can see it. So I'll put that quote in the chat box and then I'm going to pull it right up on the screen. So the study itself uh, says we conclude that mental training employed in this study enhances cortical output signal which drives the muscle to higher activation and increases strength now this is really cool this is you setting an a mental uh, mindset saying i'm here to really make a difference, make a difference in the world, be a great example for others, inspire others to lean, live a clean and healthy lifestyle, to be here so I can be healthy and long, last a long lifetime, so my wife and I can enjoy traveling around the world. I set those positive intentions 
before I even go into the gym. It doesn't have to be out loud. It's nice to be out loud if you can say them out loud without sounding weird if people looking at you. But if you can say them out loud, even better, because those vibrations take to you, you hear it audibly. So you're sending a second signal. But even just saying them quietly in your own mind, I am here to make a difference. I am here to improve my health and to set a great example for others. That's a powerful place to be. You bring that power into the gym with you and you will find yourself lifting cleaner, lifting stronger. You'll be lifting with more um, a precise element to it so you don't uh, risk injury, which is really important because if we have a messy mindset, if we've got scrambled things going on in our head, mixed emotions going on, we're still carrying that with us into the gym, we get sloppy in our workout. And that's where injuries happen. We can start just like doing, putting on a little too much weight because that's ego engaged because we're angry or frustrated about something earlier. These things we can control, but you need to sit there and take a moment, take a few beats and recenter yourself, re-clear yourself, get rid of all that garbage that's in your mind and your emotional state and center your brain and your thoughts on a clear, strong, powerful intent of positivity. That will help a lot. And, and that's where we can get ourselves using our mind and our emotional state as a powerful force for good. Instead of letting all that mental chatter and those mixed emotions actually get us into a place where we're making choices that are actually bad for our health, bad for our fitness, bad for our workouts, bad for almost everything. Now, we don't want to ignore them, but what we want to do is try to see some positive elements in them. Like I said before earlier, if you need to uh, really de-stress, say, okay, let's get this workout done and then commit to de-stressing. Relax, chill by the pool, chill uh, with the kids, with the family, with the pets, with, uh, with whatever that makes you feel regrounded, even getting outside. Oh, there's a cool grounding technique that said, go grounding, by the way, is a technique where, you, and, and again, this is science. This is not woo-woo. This has actually been measured on scientific equipment that when you go outside barefoot and stand on the ground, the ground, the earth, is huge ball of metal that we're doing since off amazing amounts of energy, right? We're a small human. We're a speck on this amazing ball of energy called the earth, this planet. But if you stand with your feet uh, barefoot on the ground next to a tree, especially as a big tree, like an oak tree or a tree with deep roots, those roots go into the ground. That energy is like a conduit. And you stand by that tree, back to the tree, and just breathe and feel that energy. You can release some of that negative energy right into the earth. And this has been documented on physical equipment showing energetic flow. This is not woo-woo stuff. This is not, you know, the guru stuff. This is real science. This shows the energy flow actually happening. Um, unfortunately, we're wearing rubber shoes most of the time, and that actually blocks flow, just like rubber around an electrical wire blocks that wire from electrocuting people. That's a good thing normally, but we're walking around in rubber-soled shoes most of the time, and we're not doing any of this grounding, releasing some of this negative and stressful energy into the earth. That's what it's there for. So let's let's talk about some of the other things when we are stressed we often reach for salty foods what is salt salt is a mineral it's a base it's very grounding you find minerals in the ground right root vegetables ground vegetables these are things that are grounding but uh, unfortunately we reach for fat and salt too much why fat slows down the digestive tract when you put in food that slows down the digestion process because fats and meats especially are very slow to digest so our digestion process slows down when you put plants in it's very easy to digest so our digestion lights up <laughs> and energizes so you don't want to do heavy foods before a workout uh, one of the things I do is smoothies, berries. Why? They're explosive energy. You look at a berry and it's the uh, baby plant. So an entire plant 
is going to expand out of that concentrated source of energy. That's why berries are so packed with antioxidants and vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients. They're the richest source of polyphenols, which are great for our microbiome and our health. So berries is great. So I make a berries uh, with a clean green protein in it. So I've got that uh, easily digestible protein in there, the greens with all that nice chlorophyll and tons of berries. And that's what I do for pre-workout. That gives me total burst of energy that the plants are doing. But when we're stressed, we want to calm down some. We want to bring that stress energy uh, back down, right? And that's why we reach for salty foods. Salt is a mineral that is very depressing on the system. And what that does is cause a downward relaxation. But it's a relaxation at a cost. We can find other foods like sweet potatoes. They're grounding, but they don't have the cost of high blood pressure and hypertension that uh, high amounts of sodium can cause. So we can find a balance there. We can choose foods that have um, benefits to us and herbs. And that's why I love the supplemental herbs like adaptogens, because they do help the body regulate and get you out of that stress mode so that you're not making decisions from a stressful state of mind and a stressful state of emotions. That's when we make the bad decisions, decisions like, I don't want to do that, or I'll do it later, or God, I just want to eat this sweet thing right now because I need it. You know, I feel like I need it. So another thing is anxiety when we reach for alcohol or other things that actually calm the nerves. And yes, they do. But there's kava and kava doesn't have as much as negative effects as it too. There's other herbs out there relaxing like chamomile. Um, so you can choose other objects that don't have the negative health effects on it that can still give you some of that alleviation on a physical level, but are much healthier. Like chamomile has wonderful antioxidants in it too as well. So choose the ones that de-stress you, but do it in a way that benefits your health instead of negatively impacting your health. Um, so every action is a decision to create your future self. So you are choosing right now, every day, you are choosing what your future is going to look like. I am 58. I am so thankful to that 36 year, <laughs> that, that 22 year old, 36 years ago that chose a plant-based diet. I am so thankful that I am 58 and have 17 and a half inch arms and in the best health of my life. Thank you, 22 year old, for making that good decision back then. Um, and thank you for the 23, the 24 to 25 and all the way through for exercising and staying healthy and staying true to this path of choosing health. But it took me to get my mind right. It took me to get my emotional self right. I was in a really bad place when I was making those bad choices for my health. And it's only when I released a lot of that pain and suffering, when I got myself out of depression through seeking help and, and, and advice and guidance from others that I really changed that around. And now I am always looking for, wow, how is that going to help me in my health and fitness? That's where I'm choosing from now because I got my mind, and my emotional state in a better place. Look, I get stressed out too, you know, sometimes uh, stuff happens like uh, uh, work stuff, my work stuff, when uh, some of the products like an ingredient is out of stock and now I can't sell it and now I can't. And then customers start calling and say, hey, why are you out of stock? I, I use this. I love this product. Don't be out of stock. And that, that hurts me because I love giving health to other people. And when I can't fulfill my promise to try to get that done because of something that I can't control, it's stressful. It is stressful. I hate it. But at the same time, I got to understand that. Do the best I can. Know that I'm going to get through this and keep looking forward to trying to making it better. And that's why making the decisions right now, as good as you can, can leave you in a better place and your future self is going to thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I really, this one was a really important one for me because it's so important to get your mind and your emotional state in a good place. And even when you can't, try not to make a decision about your health and fitness from that place. Understand that your body is trying to reach for those things because it wants to calm down, it wants to de-stress, it wants to feel good, it wants to feel more energized. But try to think of that and say, okay, I'm reaching for a sweet 
that means I'm probably mentally bored or a little bit stressed. Okay, so what are some good choices I could make as far as health? What are the things I could do? Go outside and just walk around the park for a while. Open up my mind, freshen up, just listen to the birds, listen to the plants, <laughs> go smell some flowers and get some aromatherapy going in and there. That can change your mood, your mindset, and then come in and make the decision about what you want to eat and get yourself a nice big salad with lots of greens on it. And that will change the way you approach your health. And you're going to, your future self is going to be very happy for that you did that, that you took control but not control like you're overriding. You're not going to be a dictator to your body. When you send this message to yourself that I'm going to make the right choices, and then you feel the benefits of that choice, your body is going to say, thank you for doing that. You know, I really wanted that high fat chocolate bar and you chose a cacao, uh, you know, shake with no sugar in it and just a little stevia. I feel better. I got what I wanted and we did it healthy. Thank you for choosing that. Now I'm not paying for it the next day. Now I'm not paying for it for the next year <laughs> or the next lifetime. So that's how you can make choices that empower you, that result in the best physical fitness for you. The research is solid around this, that what you choose for your diet, what you choose in an emotional state and what you choose in a mental state is going to affect your physical state as well. So they're all tied together and being conscious about your, your and, and directed with direct intentions, positively motivated and, and get into the gym and make good food choices. This is why you can bring the whole set together. You'll stop procrastinating, you'll stop making excuses and you'll start reaping the benefits of what consistency, nutrient density, and um, intensity. You'll train with such more intensity because it feels good. It's not you fighting yourself. I know I've been there. I've been in places where sometimes I just couldn't shake a mental state and I get in there and I'm fighting myself in the gym. My brain is saying, stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, no, I need to go, I need to go. But I feel like I'm fighting myself. We don't need to be there and we can get out of that if we just keep practicing as it. And the more we keep practicing, making these good choices and feeling the good rewards, we're going to get ourselves out of the loop. Remember that loop is, uh, I don't feel good. I make a bad food choice. It affects my mood and behavior. It affects my physical state. I don't work out. And then the loop just keeps getting worse and worse. And you just keep going down that spiral. Get off of that treadmill, get out of that loop and start making conscious decisions. Center yourself before you go work out, clear all that mental chatter out, come home, make good choices about your food. Remember, we eat to feed this body, not to feed our emotions and our mindset. That's not what food is for. Use food what it's supposed to be for, <laughs> to feed this body nutrition so it can work for you. And when you do that, the emotional states and the mental states will improve. I guarantee you, they have for me. I know they will for you if they're not already. And if this is just a good reaffirmation for you, for many of you already doing a very healthy, clean, plant, whole, whole food, plant-based diet, taking good supplements to help support that uh, diet and exercising well with intensity. Stay positive and let's be a positive example. Let's build an entire new world of people that feel great about being healthy and setting an example for the others. Thanks for listening. We got some exciting news. We're gonna be launching our brand new Vegan D3. And I'm gonna be telling you all about it. Why it's why we are the first to market with this type of vitamin D3 and what makes this organic D3 different from any other vegan D3 ever produced for the marketplace. Real excited to bring you guys this new supplement and why, because I'm always out there looking for the absolute best in every category. We brought the best, the number one uh, ahi flower, the number one omega-3 of any plant-based omega-3 in the world. We brought you lentine, the highest in protein and highest in nutrient density of any plant in the world. This is what I do. I will keep searching for the absolute best. And now there is finally an, a 100% pure D3 
never before in a plant in in a organic algae from organic algae so you get it in its organic state and a hundred percent pure d3 none of that d2 in 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 in, in the uh, uh vitamin d3 so is, we're really excited about launching this we're going to be doing a big giveaway to support all the uh, frontline workers out there teachers doctors um people who are on the front lines is a big thank you and give back help support their immune system d3 is so important for immune we'll be talking about that next week thanks again for joining me until next week stay healthy <laughs>